All right, welcome. Um, my name is Michelle Irvin. I'm a technical writer with Google Cloud, so um, I write end user documentation for some of our cloud products. Um, but I'm here to talk to you about some of the work that I've been doing with the DORA research program. So this program looks at lots of different things, but one of them is documentation. And we have a documentation quality score. Uh, so we're here to talk about quality documentation. Docs are a crucial part of any software project, but creating quality documentation can often feel daunting. And even the concept of quality documentation can kind of feel nebulous as well. So I'm gonna talk about our fairly straightforward score that we've used or measurement that we have for documentation quality. Um, but maybe more importantly, I'm gonna to talk to you about why quality documentation matters and also some, give you some insights into how you can create and maintain quality documentation. So to tell this story, we are going to first look at the DORA research program itself so that we kind of all have context about what we're looking at. Um, and then we're gonna go through some of our findings around documentation quality and the extensive impact that it has. And then let's take a look at the actual measure itself. So how do we define and, and measure uh, this quality documentation? And then before we wrap up, um, the great thing about this research program is we do have all these findings and, and ways to measure things and different impacts, but we also have specific things that you can do to improve your, your documentation quality and also to improve other things in your whole um, pipeline and working with software. So let's get started. Um, the DORA research program, it's focused on the development, delivery, and operation of software. So we're squarely in the software world. This is not only open source software, but it's absolutely applicable uh, to working with open source software. Um, and this research program has been running for uh, just over 10 years. And the DORA metrics, so some of the metrics that we use as part of this wider program, um, they're often cited as industry standard um, or definitely used a lot throughout the industry. And as of 2023, so last year's research, uh, we've had over 36,000 respondents. So the data that we're working with, we have lots of data and the findings that we have are based on a lot of data. We're focused on lots of different capabilities and practices to do with software development, so we're definitely gonna see those and touch on those a little bit, but today we're here to talk about um, documentation specifically. And the DORA research program is part of Google Cloud, so the team is part of Google Cloud, but we don't study Google Cloud. We study software development around the world, lots of different organizations, big ones, small ones, lots of different contexts, lots of different documentation quality in these different organizations. Um, so not only does that give us a lot of data to work with, but it also means that the findings that we get are at a level that are also applicable to all of these different contexts as well. So now that we have a bit of an idea of the research program, let's talk about documentation. So the specific type of documentation that we've looked at in this research study is what I call internal documentation. So this is the content that you as a practitioner would be using as you go about your day-to-day -day work. It's also the content that you would be writing for your coworker or even for your future self. Say when you have to go back and debug something that you've worked on before um, or add to part of the project that you've worked on before. This is different from end user documentation, which might be a more formal like user guide that you publish uh, um, with, a, with a product. Um, in the open source world, uh, this can kind of feel blurry sometimes because normally the internal documentation your customers wouldn't see uh, because this would be locked in with your company, but in open source we kind of peel back the layers and so um, people can see the internal documentation as well as the external documentation. Um, so that's the specific docs that we're looking at. And uh, I've mentioned this before, but we look at a ton, a ton of different things with each research study. So this slide is very busy, there's a lot on it, but I wanted to put it here to give you a sense of how many different things we look at. This is the model from 2021, which is the first year that we added documentation into the mix. Every year we look at, at some slightly different things. Um, 
And every year while we're building the survey and then also analyzing the data, we're trying to put together a picture of how these things all work together. Um, so here in 2021, we are trying to figure out how does documentation fit into this, into this dynamic um, system? And what we found was that documentation underpinned every single technical capability that we looked at. It impacted security practices, effective use of the cloud, automated testing, observability and monitoring, trunk-based development, every single thing that we looked at, teams with higher quality documentation saw better implementation of those practices. Um, this wasn't a pattern that we were initially expecting to see, but it was persistent. We started with security and then just every single thing we looked at, documentation was just underpinning and foundational to those practices. And another great thing about this research program is it's based on numbers. Um, so we have numbers to put onto all of these impacts. So teams with quality documentation compared to teams with poor quality documentation, teams with high quality documentation are 3.8 times more likely to implement security practices. 2.5 times more likely to fully leverage the cloud, 2.4 times more likely to meet or exceed their reliability targets, 3.5 times more likely to implement site reliability engineering practices. These numbers are really big. They're really big and they're persistent. We saw this in 2021, so these numbers are from 2021, the first year we looked at docs. The same pattern in 2022, the same pattern in 2023. Um, we calculate these impacts using structural equation modeling. Um, so we are very fortunate to have like quant uh, researchers working with us who can do this. Uh, and this is not causation or correlation, but this is what we call predictive. So we can say that this predicts, impacts, or drives. Now, these results are enough for you to pay attention to documentation, right? And these numbers are pretty impressive, and this pattern is persistent, but there's more. Um, so to look at this next um, effect, we're going to need to talk about interactions. So the example here is a plant and we talk about two things interacting to cause a third thing. So when you have sunshine and water in the right combination, then you see a plant growing and thriving. What our researcher did is took a look at documentation and took a look at these technical capabilities. And when you have a technical capability implemented in the presence of quality documentation, then what you see is your organizational performance improve much more than in the presence of poor quality documentation. So here, instead of looking at a plant, we're looking at organizational performance, which we measure using things like revenue and customer satisfaction. Um, so just like in the last, with the last effect, here again, we have numbers and we can do graphs. Um, so let's take a look at this bottom set of data. So this red down here, this is the presence of low quality documentation. And here we've just picked one technical practice, so this is continuous integration. And as a team increases their use of an implementation of continuous integration, we do see some impact on organizational performance. So it is good for the larger organization. However, let's take a look at that top set of data, the green one. In the presence of high quality documentation, this impact that we see is amplified. And again, we have numbers. So for low quality documentation, we, sh we see a 34% impact. With high quality documentation, we see a 750% impact. Again, this pattern is persistent. We saw it for every single technical capability in 2022, and we saw it re like reoccur in the 2023 data. Um, and this can seem pretty incredible, but at the same time, there's a lot of things that documentation does, right? It scales knowledge and practices across a large group, but it also scales it across time, 
right? So think about writing for yourself or someone t picking up a project and, and maintaining it or onboarding. Um, documentation kind of keeps these things steady and keeps that knowledge spread, apart, st spread um, in the project. But it also, the act of writing itself can also be beneficial, right? So even the act of putting these uh, practices in written words can also increase um, their effect. And we've talked a lot about the technical practices here, but uh, the DORA research looks at lots of different types of things, including cultural practices and different outcomes as well. And we see documentation tied to these um, also. So teams with quality documentation, they see a substantial increase in productivity, job satisfaction, and a decrease in burnout. Um, everything that I've talked about, everything that I will talk about today and everything that we've already gone through, it's all available on dora.dev. Um, and the slides link out to the different year's reports that, these, that this information is coming from. So all of these findings are pretty clear and um, in my opinion, pretty impressive. So again, this is a good reason why documentation matters. Um, it absolutely motivates and justifies an investment in quality documentation. But a question remains, what is quality documentation? Um, so let's take a look at something that might be a little bit nebulous and see how we've measured it in this research program. So this is survey-based. So we're not reading your docs. I have not taken a look at every single page. <laughs> um, but what we have is one set of questions uh, that talks about eight different metrics, so different attributes or characteristics of documentation quality. And because this is survey-based and I just have one question to kind of figure this out, um, it also means that we're not looking at, I'm not asking you about your security docs and your docs about CI and your docs about cloud. I'm, we're just asking about your docs. So it's just one kind of score, it's one bucket that kind of encompasses everything. And also, it's one score that encompasses your entire experience with the documentation. So in a way, I kind of think about this as a bit of a black box, right? Where we're defining it, but not necessarily seeing inside of it. Um, but we've still picked some different characteristics to figure out what the shape of this box is. Um, the first thing is, is your documentation reliable? When you're using it, do you trust it? Is it doing what you need it to do? Is the content clear? Can you understand it? Is it findable? Can you find it in the first place? Um, is it comprehensive? Does it cover everything it needs to? Is it well organized? Is it up to date? Is it accurate? And is it relevant? Do you reach for the docs when you have a problem? So each of these characteristics, um, I don't actually, we don't actually ask, like, are your docs up to date? Uh, we don't use these terms exactly like this. They each have a statement that goes with them. And if you want to take a look at the statements, they're all published on dora.dev. And then for each of these statements, we have an agree to disagree scale. We take all of those answers, add it all up, and express it as one number. So we can tell, we can measure your documentation experience, the quality of your entire documentation system, using one number, which is how we plug it into the rest of the model. So this is useful for a lot of things. One is like, it kind of demystifies what quality documentation is. When I've talked about this sometimes, um, I've had people say quality documentation is fine, but sometimes you can't even find it. Well, then it's not quality documentation in terms of how we've measured it here, right? You need to be able to find it. And if you can find it, then you can update it, which means it stays up to date, which means it stays accurate. Like it's all a bit of a loop, right? Um, and we saw this actually in the way that, um, that this score, what we say is loaded. So when we got the data back, all of these attributes of documentation, they actually tended to all um, kind of behave in the same way. They would all either appear or disappear kind of at the same rate, which means either they're measuring and mean the exact same thing, so accuracy is the exact same thing as well-organized, 
or we've just done a really good job of try of like triangulating and getting at an underlying concept. Um, and so uh, I'm pretty confident that this is a, a fairly useful measure. Um, and it's also showing us really persistent patterns in the findings as well. So it's great to have a sense of what we're talking about with documentation quality. Some of these attributes might even give you a bit of an idea of, of what to fix or pay attention to in your own um, documentation. But it's still a little tricky because what you need is things to do, right? It's great to say we want higher quality documentation, but that's a bit of a hill to climb and it always helps to break things down into actionable steps. So what we've done with the DORA research program is we've also investigated some practices that you can put in place or different resources that you can put in place that we have also found impact the documentation score. So this isn't just a list that I've put together for you, um, but these are also actual findings from the research program. Um, I'd also like to emphasize that this is not necessarily exhaustive either, right? You probably have tech writers in your organization or different documentation champions um, that might have other ideas as well that are absolutely good to take on board. Um, so use this as a guidance and um, some things that you might be able to start or do, um, but definitely reach out to some of your documentation experts for support as well. All right. So this first set is kind of focused on like skills and resources. Um, teams, oh sorry, I went to you. Uh, teams that have access to training around uh, technical documentation see a higher documentation quality score. Um, and we have a training that we use internally at Google. And one of the lines that I love from it is uh, every engineer is also a writer. And writing is a skill. It's a skill that maybe not everyone is incredibly comfortable with or proficient at, or they might not feel proficient, but it's a skill that you can build. And it's a skill that you can develop. And you don't need to be the best writer, right? Like often internal documentation is not written by like professional writers. It's written by the people building and maintaining these systems. And it's important for them to be writing about the systems they're maintaining because they know them best, right? So write about them. And yes, you can improve that skill, but that, doesn't, that shouldn't stop you from, from writing about um, the project that you're working on. The next thing is uh, having guidelines to update documentation. So if you have clear steps about how you update or edit existing documentation, then you see a higher documentation score. Also ha having access to a style guide or guidelines about writing for a global audience does this mean that every single time that you write some new documentation or update documentation, it's going to be exact and it's going to match that style guide exactly? Probably not, right? But having that resource in place means that somebody has gotten together and said this matters. We're going to pick some resources. It's there if you need a tiebreaker or if you need some support as you're writing. Um, and uh, that will just elevate the documentation quality as well. Um, so these next set of practices are a bit more focused on the work and how you distribute the work or organize the work. So the first is make sure that there are owners. Make sure that there are owners identified for th the documentation. Um, this can be hard uh, even in, internally in, an, in an, like an enterprise setting. I'm sure it's hard in an open source setting as well. Um, but it's still good to have clear responsibilities and clear ownership. And think about um, those guidelines for updating the docs, right? Like if you know who owns it, then like you can go in, update it, and send a pull request. And you can feel a bit more comfortable doing that if, if the ownership is clear. And as much as ownership is important, it's also important to distribute the documentation work. So we saw teams that have formal processes to distribute documentation work see higher documentation quality. Um, it's not going to work if all of the documentation falls on one person. Not only do they not know everything to do with all of the different parts of the system, but again, the, the act of writing can help your whole um, development of, of your project itself, right? So spread that out a little bit. Make a formal process. 
Um, is it going to be perfect? No, but no writing is ever perfect and no writing is ever done, right? It's always going to be needed to main, be, it's always, you're always going to need to maintain it, to update it. There's always going to be something unclear that some, someone can come in and edit or change, hopefully. Um, and then also incorporate docs in the software delivery lifecycle. So make sure that you've identified the different um, bits of work and that these are incorporated while you're working on your project at the appropriate times. Um, so that it's not an afterthought and that you can do it in the moment where it makes sense. Okay, so these next set uh, is a bit more focused on the actual work itself. So we've kind of organized the work and now we're doing things. Uh, so the first one is documenting critical use cases. So teams that have critical use cases documented see a higher doc quality. Um, and then this next one is my second favorite one. Uh, and it's uh, to remember to delete documentation. Remove stale content, right? There might be redundant content. Figure out which one's right, or maybe a mashup of them are right. You need to kind of combine things and cl cut things out. Um, but if we think about, so documentation is important, right? Like we saw those impacts, but if we think about what we're actually measuring, it's the experience with the documentation. Too much documentation could be just as bad as not enough documentation, right? If it's, documentation is expensive too. You have to write it, you have to maintain it to keep it up to date. You have to make sure it's not redundant and somebody else hasn't written like three other pages that are the same thing. Um, so making sure that you have what you need and that you're removing things that you don't need um, keeps the whole system a lot healthier. Uh, so I said that was my second favorite one. This last one is my favorite one. Um, and will probably resonate with everyone in the room who has shown up for a documentation talk. Uh, value documentation work. So teams that recognize documentation work during an engineer's performance review and, and promotion, those teams see higher quality documentation. Um, and so this probably resonates for, for everyone in attendance here, um, but also Something, two things I want to emphasize for this one in particular. Um, one is that documentation work is engineering work, right? We saw an impact on those different um, technical capabilities. This has an impact on the actual system that you're building. The quality of your documentation can change like the quality and behavior of your system itself, right? So often I think just like testing, right? It can be seen as like a different skill or not as applicable as actually building something. This is an aspect of building something and keeping it maintained. Um, the other thing that I want to emphasize is that uh, this may or may not be something that you can control. I mean, you can look at our findings, you can share this with your team, um, but if you're not in a leadership position right now, you might be in a leadership position at some point as well. So remember that this is an important part of the engineering work that goes into software development and operation. And this is um, actionable, it's measurable, and there are skills involved, and there's work involved, right? So when people are doing this work and you're recognizing it, um, then we see higher quality. All right, so to wrap up, if there are three things that you can remember and take away from today, the first is that documentation quality has extensive impact on the systems that you are building. It's measurable. We've done the hard work of putting numbers on it for you. Um, the second thing is that there are concrete steps that you can take to improve your documentation quality. This isn't some nebulous concept, but there are small steps that you can do that will improve your doc quality. And the third thing is that documentation is just one thing to dig into. The DORA research program is much broader than this. So just like we have all of these findings about documentation, there's tons more to dig into in terms of security, software delivery performance, um, and also uh, individual ink um, outcomes around like burnout or job satisfaction. So there is a ton more there both for you and for different stakeholders in your organization. 
Um, I'm not gonna go through all of this right now, but the research program, we don't assess specific, just like we're not reading your docs, we're not assessing specific like resources or training programs that are available, but I did put a collection together of um, some resources and programs that, that I'm more familiar with, but there's a ton out there, there's lots. Um, so go take a look and, and see what resonates with you. Um, the training, that tech writing course that I mentioned from Google, it's all available externally. Uh, we've got style guides, uh, the Good Docs project uh, has templates for documentation. Um, the Season of Docs is a program that Google runs. Um, Aaron's right here if anybody wants to chat about it. Um, for community, Write the Docs is a great group. They've got a really active Slack. Um, and then there's some books there's, there as well. Software Engineering at Google has a chapter on documentation at Google, internal documentation. Um, and then Docs for Developers is also very good. And even though um, this is focused on internal documentation, I do think these findings are affirming for all types of documentation, including end user documentation, um, including, well, especially for end user documentation that has a developer audience. Uh, there's lots to dig into in the Dora Research Program. So take a look at dora.dev, and there's a bit more discussion about documentation in the blog post, documentation is like sunshine. And then another great thing about the research program is that it's got this amazing um, interaction between researchers and practitioners. And one of the places where this happens is the Dora community. Uh, so uh, the link is right there, you're welcome to join. There's meetups virtually, sometimes in person, um, and there's lots of different people talking about things like documentation and beyond that have to do with working with software. Um, and then lastly, our research, uh, the survey is out for 2024 right now. So uh, if you feel like this applies to the work that you do, um, please take about 15 minutes and take the survey um, and absolutely share it with your network and different stakeholders as well um, so that we have more uh, data about documentation and other things. All right, thank you very much. All right, if, I'll take questions if there are any questions, and then we also have hard copies of the 2023 report on the back table as well, if anybody wants to take a copy. Yeah. The one that I found most surprising. Um, well, I have to say that back in 2021, we were kind of focused on like the key outcomes that we look at, which have to do with like that organizational performance, but also software delivery metrics. And we weren't initially looking at the technical capabilities like individually, because usually we're looking at those driving things. Um, that was also the year that we included a bunch of questions about processes and resources. Um, and I had read through some of the results, uh, just the data, and this is standard survey design, but uh, under the list of like resources and practices, one of the options was not applicable, and one of the options was none of the above. And so that was there just because of survey design, but a sizable enough, not, not a majority, but a sizable enough chunk of people had said none of the above to every single one of those practices. So they didn't have owners, right? They weren't updating docs when new features came out. Um, they didn't have style guides or guidelines to update the docs. So it, that was really helpful for me because it's, it's one thing to think about like, what does the doc quality score impact, right? But even that is a bit, um, abstracted in a way. So I was thinking about those people who had sat there and had checked this box and were doing like none of those things. Um, and then later that day, I read the draft for our security chapter. <laughs> and the complicated environment that like you're working with, with these like different security threats and like different parts of your system. And like all I could think about were these people who weren't doing like who are working in an environment with no documentation practices. And I was, I was just like, their security is 
bad problem. Like, like, how are they doing it? Like, they're not doing it. You can't, how do you get anything done? Um, so I messaged our researcher and he checked and it was this huge impact on security practices. And I mean, it's not surprising, but it was kind of surprising in a way. And he even messaged like our security expert internally and was like, does this surprise you? And our expert was like, absolutely not. <laughs> well, he was like, how do you think, he was like, not everyone is a security expert. Like, how do you think we do our jobs? We have to document it, right? Uh, that, or that's one of the ways that you, that you scale security solutions. Um, and, and so after that, we stepped back and we looked at every single technical practice and it was just like completely foundational for every single thing. So. Like right, right now I'm not as surprised, but at the time it was, it was, yeah, not quite what we had initially expected. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, uh, the correlation between documentation and built outcomes that mm -hmm. you mentioned. Uh, it's been my experience, I've seen different teams that working well together, they have good leaders, and all, all of these things are score up. Yeah. And have teams that are non-functional, and all of these things go down. Yeah. I was wondering how did you connect all of these to specifically documentation, while you know other parameters are also in place? Yeah, so so one thing to say is that it's a, it's a really complicated system, right? Like, like there's all these interact, like it's not just two isolated things that we're looking at, right? Like these are really complex um, systems and it's also people, right? Um, one thing to kind of remember is that the documentation quality, like it is just one black box and it's not the security docs and it's not, right, like your cloud documentation. It's just kind of broad documentation. Um, so that kind of makes me more confident that the documentation is really underpinning these, these other things. Um, but it's true. Sometimes you have strong leadership, right? And, and a lot of things just fit to better. I bet, I bet the testing is better too, right? Um, but that doesn't mean that these things aren't impacting each other, right? So, so leadership matters, like teams working effectively together matter, right? But the documentation is still has an active role in it, right? It's still, it's still scaling knowledge. It's still capturing knowledge in the first place. Um, and then another thing to say is that uh, this isn't correlation or causation, it's predictive. So um, yeah, we're not saying that documentation is absolutely the only thing behind security practices being implemented, but it's definitely predictive of the successful implementation of security practices. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the business impact, some of the outcomes of mm -hmm. those stats are I know. Have you had anyone successfully use those stats to uh, generate better resources for the tech writing effort or any more budget? Have you heard any of those stories? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I haven't heard of any like specific stories. Like we brought it to our CEO and he dropped everything and <laughs> gave us like. Um, but uh, uh, it's like we've also just been kind of like chipping away, right? Like we've been, I've been trying to share these findings, um, even internally at, at Google, like I've been trying to share these findings. So like, yes, I would love for leadership to like drop everything and to support this. It's a bigger story than that, right? I also like at Google, we also have internal documentation and it's also, we need to motivate people to value this, to do it, to know what the steps are to, to improve this work. And we have lots of tooling and other things around this, including those, those tech writing trainings. Um, so one of the great things about this is, yes, I think it speaks to leadership. Um, I also do think uh, it speaks to just motivating like practitioners and people to do things. It's also given me a great way to amplify and put a spotlight on work that's already happening. Right, like resources that are already available internally and externally. Um, so yeah, definitely multi-prong, but uh, if you get any traction and have one of those stories, I would love to hear it. <laughs> yeah. The, the other question that I had related to just the research itself, mm -hmm. you know, Dora DevOps is kind of the focus, it's in the name. Yeah. Did you encounter any pushback from people wanting to include technical documentation in that study? And 
How, mm. did, that, how did that come about? Yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, the the initial like the way that this this research program kind of initiated was out of the DevOps world. Nathan and Amanda are here from the program as well. Um, it's it it's already broader than maybe what we might think of as that term. So we look at lots of different things, and um, it's definitely applicable to a lot of things that that you might not think of as like purely DevOps. Um, so in terms of the researchers, like no, like no, no issue at all, including documentation. Like they were thrilled. The researcher who was leading it at the time had had also been doing some or been trying to do some research into documentation internally at different points. So it was definitely a point of interest. Um, Nathan, do you want to say anything else about the DevOps angle, or I yeah? Yeah. I do find honestly that that word DevOps, and I love DevOps, that opens as many doors as the closes these days, right? And so hearing that sort of like, oh, as a quick fact, documentation isn't DevOps. Let's talk about uh, infrastructure automation. That's DevOps. Right. It's, it's all DevOps. It's, but you just stop using it. Yeah. Dora means Dora. It stands for nothing. <laughs> Yeah, Aaron. How can we get like a big fancy badge like being lead certified as a building or like underwriters laboratory where you get some fancy badge on your public facing website that says, Yes, we follow all of the door documentation principles. <laughs> that that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Something for something for us to think about. Um, one thing a bit on that point is um, it can be tempting to, so say you can run a survey similar to this um, with, your, with your customers or your, the, like the developers working on your project. It can be really tempting to want to fixate on one number or a score. Um, and I think it is meaningful, right? Like it is nice to know what your documentation quality is. Um, but I think it's almost more meaningful to track that over time rather than to see if you've got a 9.5, right? Because Honestly, like even maintaining a number, even maintaining documentation quality, like that takes a lot of work, right? Because documentation, this is a line from Write the Docs earlier this week uh, in one of the presentations. Documentation wants to go out of date. <laughs> like it's like actively, it's actively trying to like reduce its own quality, right? So, so like even maintaining that, that quality score, I think is a win and indicative of a lot of work, right? So um, that's a thing to keep in mind, is to not focus on like high scores, um, though that would be wonderful as well, but to focus on like maintaining and improving. Great. Oh, yep, yeah, go ahead. I'm curious if you have a sense of, if, do people have trouble answering questions about documentation quality? I imagine that like documentation I refer to, there's so many different things that I'm mm -hmm. referring to. Right, yeah. So I guess um, it is it is because it is that such a broad thing too, right? We're kind of just like asking you about your whole documentation experience. Um, we might not be getting like details about specific like issues in your docs um, or an area that needs more attention than others. Um, and so one of the great things about this research program is that like we have so much data from so many different contexts that we can run um, the math behind all of these different impacts and everything like that. But when you're working with your own project, you're working on a different scale, but you're also working with more data in a lot of ways, right? So you might have different, like varying quality of documentation across different aspects of your project. Um, you might even have two different people who work on fairly similar things that give it different scores, right? Because Maybe one person needs to work on like some integrations with something, and the support for that is just poorer. Um, or maybe somebody finds the documentation like a lot harder to navigate for one reason or another. Um, so it is definitely like more dynamic than that one number might might imply. Um, but uh, yeah, there's there's ways for you to dig into it in your own project and try to make 
improvements. Just really quickly, I have mm -hmm. 2023 questions. And when we say questions, we're lying. Because what we do is we put statements in front of them. Yeah. 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 And so dig into those questions, like for documentation, but also for any other part of the program that you might find interesting. Um, the questions themselves can also give some insight. Um, also survey design, we do, we do run it. Um, I'm forgetting the term for this now, but we do like test it before it goes out so that we can kind of catch things that are not working. Um, All right, I'll, I'll be around if there's questions after the fact. And then again, there's um, hard copies of the report in the back if you wanna pick one up. Um, yeah, thanks, thanks so much for coming Thursday afternoon.